Hi everyone, Don Reinveld, the wheel, mother Android stack. My name is Paweł Junak. I work at Polydia in Warsaw in Poland. We do the uh, mobile apps for iOS and Android. Uh, quick introduction, what we're gonna talk about. The talk is introductionary. I will, uh, like went through all these uh, lips, show you what you can do it, but I don't uh, tell you like every detail, how to configure it, just to show you possibilities, you have it, uh, and stuff like that. Um, so let's do a quick poll. How many of you knows all of them, or like most of them? Good, I was like afraid that everyone gonna know everything, so I like gonna quit. Uh, I like about a half of them, like 304, 302, good audience, thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, quick history about why this talk came to life. Um, our company organized the MCE, Mobile Central Europe in Warsaw, it's an event, a quite big uh, conference. We had the thing what was called Open Source Bar, and we were talking about these libraries uh, we use at work, uh, we contribute to some of, of our stuff. It was for Android and iOS, and the conclusion was that a lot of developers don't know about really neat and useful libraries that like speed up your uh, development, is out it. And they also are like new developers when they start doing stuff with the documentation from developer Android and so on. There's no mentions about the libraries that help you out. So if a new developer comes to our place and you like, oh, I didn't know I can do that, and I can do that. So he do, does like async task, HTTP connection, and so on. The basics are important, but if you can avoid them, like you have everything written out, tested, you save your time, time for fixing bugs, and yeah, everything works good. Never again. Uh, the like outline for every library is like what we can avoid doing uh, using this library. The first one is Timber. Never delete, never again deleting logs from your production app. So this is actually a really simple library, but it um, gives you one neat thing. Like you don't have to remember if you deleted your logs or not. Sometimes like you log whatever, foo, foo bar, password, whatever, and then it stays on the production app, and if you want to delete it, you have to search for it, or you forgot something. And this little uh, library, wrote by Jack Wharton, who is like famous everywhere, uh, saves you from that. And if you remember anything from this talk, just remember this uh, library. How does it work? Yeah, with timber, we plant. We plant three, the, the bug tree. So, if we have a build config debug in our initialization class for application, it plants tree. We have a tree, we have a logs. We don't have a tree, we don't have a logs. And it's that simple. Uh, logs are uh, made after the uh, native log class, so we have different verbosity, D, error, and stuff on. We can use printf format, and one thing that I know if you notice, there's no tag. So you don't have to, uh, in every class, put a tag and a little cleaner, because timber, timber uh, it's detecting which class is calling it, and in the log, it shows which, which class it was called from. So yeah, really simple thing, but saves you a lot of time and a lot of thinking about that I deleted my logs. Okay, butter knife, one of the most known, but yeah, let's, let's go it. Uh, it's again, Jack Wharton. It was, I guess, the talk before, they also talked about it, how it was made inside. Never again find view by ID. What's the deal? It's the standard line. But we have this. We have edit text with email. We do find view by ID. We cast it to have it to use it. And yeah, you have few views, few screens, and you like write find view by ID like 
100 times and yeah, save our keystrokes. What we do? We inject it. We have the annotation inject view, uh, inject view, <laughs> and ID of the view we want to inject into, in which variable, and it's already casted. So yeah, these two lines, it looks like small, but you're getting used to, to it really fast, and you're like never want to again write find view by ID. Okay, we're still with button knife. Never again set on click listener, anonymous class, on click and stuff. A lot of writing. What we do, we have an, another annotation on click. We annotate the view we want to uh, have the response to on click event. We have a method. One thing is also we don't have to initialize this view, so it's just this line without the inject view as we would do with butter knife. And yeah, a lot less of writing and it's quicker. And even if you want to uh, write even less, you can omit the view. But what if you want to use the view we clicked on? We add it as a variable, as argument. It's already casted and we can work on it. So yeah, we are way ahead with our keystrokes. That's the basic inject we have to do on create in activities and in uh, fragment. It, you can also use it in recycler view, like view holder stuff. Okay, that was the views. What's next? Picasso, the, I guess, second well known uh, library. Async task with HTTP connection, the loading image. It's like probably most known one liner in Android. Yeah, that's it. We have it. We have it here. We have a Picasso. We give it context. We give it a URL to our image and the view we want to put the image into. And it's done by us. We don't think about caching, about internet connection, about a lot of stuff that makes bugs. And yeah, you have to write it. It's simple, but you can do a lot more. You can have placeholders for the time. Uh, when the image is downloading or for the when uh, there is some error, no internet or 405 for whatever you need. Yeah, you can even resize it, crop it. Everything in one line uh, using Picasso. Again, a lot less keystrokes, a lot of less bugs, quicker development and yeah, safer like sane, sane head. Okay, that's one powerful tandem, RoboSpice with Retrofit. So we, are, we, we were with the background tags with downloading stuff. So we have async task with HTTP connection. Never again. Why? RoboSpice. It's, uh, it's the async task part. What's the deal with the RoboSpice? What's wrong with the async task? The first thing is, uh, if we run async task from, from our activity, it's run in the background, but if we rotate the phone or do anything that changes the configuration, the activity is recreated. So async test has a reference to our old activity. We have a new activity after rotating phone. So that's the two like really bad things happening. The old activity could can be garbage collected because there's reference from async task to it. And the second Bad thing is that the uh, everything that was uh, doing an async task in background, it's never de delivered to your activity which is on because it's a new activity and the all async task doesn't have the reference to it. So how RoboSpice solves it? The main uh, philosophy about uh, RoboSpice is that everything works in service. You run service. Uh, it does the stuff you need to do, and it returns the, um, the, the result to your activity, but through listeners. So you can rotate your phone, click back buttons and stuff, and it always uh, return to the listener from the active activity, which is right now on, on, uh, on the phone. You can do caching, stuff like that. 
So that was the async task part. We have the uh, HTTP connection part. Retrofit, I, it was, I guess it's square, so again, Jack Wharton involved. Um, what does retrofit do? It creates uh, interfaces from your API and endpoints. You model your API and endpoints as, a, as a interfaces, which uh, gives you a little nice uh, time to modeling. I don't know. Oh, there's not, nothing to see. Um, so yeah, here we have a like, endpoint for users. We have the uh, REST method, get. We have a variable path we can uh, dynamically on runtime set. And we get the repo file, a repo object. We will talk what this object comes from in a second. So yeah, that's the retrofit. Model your uh, APN, API endpoints with interfaces. What can you do also? You can put headers with a cache control, like list of headers, um, form encoded, multi-part, whatever you need for your API. You can set headers on runtime using the headers uh, annotation. And yeah, have a query to add it to your API, again, path, and yeah, looks nice. We, are, we have uh, interfaces, how to use it. We make a REST adapter. And this actually, that one of the downsides of uh, retrofit is it's one purpose only, you can say it, because it's like to use with your API from one URL. You set the URL, and then every interface, it's an uh, endpoint from this URL. So if you have a multiple places you have to touch with your internet like uh, calls, for example, download stuff, there's a few other libraries. Uh, there was Volley from Google. They use it in Google Play, or at least they used it before. I have it here, but if you want to do things like downloading stuff from the URL you get on the runtime, that's the place you can go. Um, this builder is quite uh, flexible. You can add like different level of logins. You can change the JSON uh, processor if you want to use JSON instead of JSON. This JSON is the standard one. Like change the HTTP processor and stuff like that. How to use it? We have a REST adapter and we create a object a service with, from our interface and we call the uh, method that was uh, defined in this interface and we get the object. And we now get to the point where we get the object from. It's old good Pojo. So we model our response in JSON against uh, the Pojo, or the way around. We model our Pojo against the JSON. So if, you have, if we, we have an ID field in our JSON, it's mapped to the ID. If we have a string, it's mapped to the string. If we have like 100 more, they are ignored. You don't have to think about it. We have type safety, so we have to watch out if you have an ID, which it's not int, it's going to crush you up. So it's really tricky to use uh, APIs that can change. And yeah, if we connect it together, we get the tandem. The RoboSpice is like the main thing, and the retrofit is a mod module for the RoboSpice. Uh, you extend a few classes, set up stuff. As I told, it's like I just want to go through the libraries and show you like shortcuts you can get. Uh, and I leave the rest for you to, to figure out stuff. It's not that hard. Uh, but that's the essential from it. When you use retrofit with RoboSpice, you get two, uh, two calls. They are quite self-explanatory. Yeah, sorry. Uh, success and failure. And success, we get our object, we defined, and we do whatever we need to do it, with it. 
on failure, which is like no internet, 404, whatever happens, we have a spice exception we can, uh, we can use. Okay, so that was like a lot. Arm light, never again SQL. Um, Arm light is object model. Oh shit, sorry guys, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Uh, object relation mapper for uh, SQL light. Uh, so you don't want to put uh, like write SQL. It's not bad, but if you have like to write select 100 times, it's got to be annoying. So how to do it with ORM light? Again, annotation. Like half of all we're cutting is right now annotation stuff. So yeah, here we have annotation about the table, which gonna uh, keep our repo stuff. We have a field, which is column. Uh, we can add the arguments like if the ID should be a primary key or the string should be like not null. The one thing you have to remember, you have to have uh, no args construction ever, all the time. We also will back to it. And yeah, that's the piping. You create DB helper, extending ARM light, SQL, SQL light open helper. Lovely long name. Uh, and you do it like the normal uh, the, uh, database helper. You have a on create, you use table utils to create tables using your, uh, your class. You also have like on update and some stuff you do in your database helper. And how to get the stuff into or from database. You use Java DAO class, uh, file class. Uh, here we like, again, in DB helper, we create a getter to have it. We have DAO class, which is the first one is our object, and the second is the primary key, which is in this table. And we get the uh, DAO for the, from the, our repo class. And in main activity or whatever you need. We, we need to use, uh, extend the ARM light base activity to use it. Uh, we get our DAO. We create object, use the create method, and all the SQL is there. How to get anything from, from SQLite? We have query for ID, which, is, uh, which we use with the primary key. We also have query builders, if you need anything more complex or the searches. Uh, you can do a lot of complicated stuff, but then you will need to go back to, to SQL for joins and stuff like that. And yeah, awesome module in RoboSpice, so we also again have a async task or do background task uh, done by RoboSpice. Lombok, never again boilerplate. What we do here? Again, we annotate. That's like half of the stuff we do. Uh, we have annotations that add the getters and setters. In this uh, example, it makes getters and setters for every uh, Class member, it's smart enough to not make setters for final. We can do it on per member level. We have our no arcs a constructor, and uh, you can like ask, wow, but I have like command N in Android Studio, create constructor, and co create getters, setters, etc. Uh, one. Plus for this is you have a cleaner code. It's like if you have like 10, 10, 10 members and you have like 20 getters, setters and stuff like that, it's gonna be confusing. And this is like one powerful annotation. It makes everything. It makes getters, setters, constructors with the finals, uh, hash code equals to and to string from every field you have 
parceler. Never again our standard code with, with parcel. What we do? You should know it. We annotate, yeah. We annotate one annotation, the class is parcelable. It works in like 90% uh, cases. There are some edge, uh, edge uh, cases like cyclics and stuff like that. You can then have your own code you can add. So if you have like 90% normal classes and just one you have to write the code for, so yeah, still, still save this stuff. And you use parcel wrap and unwrap method to have it, so yeah. Again, one annotation and a lot of saved code. Dogger 2, yeah, that's again, really uh, known and powerful library. Uh, as I told in the beginning, all of the stuff could be like, have, could have a separate talks. This one um, definitely have a lot of talks, a lot of blog posts, you can uh, read about it. I will just show a really simple uh, example. Uh, quick history. It was, again, the Dagger one was made by Square because they were uh, not satisfied with robot juice. Then uh, they had the problems because it was a little uh, slow uh, and guys from Google were using it in it. it in, And they, like, those reflections, there were, like, uh, debugging problems. There was, like, not clear code for debugger and stuff like that. So they made Dagger 2 with the guys from Square. And yeah, the one thing I didn't tell you, didn't tell you, like, what's the Dagger 2? It's a dependency injection library. So, what we do when we want to do short preferences? Guys. Yes, awesome. Yeah, we in inject shared preferences, but how do we get it from? Yeah, we have to do a little uh, writing, like, ahead, but we do it once and don't have, like, uh, get it all the time. So we create module, which provides shot preferences. We do our stuff here, and it's uh, in every place you need shot preference, you just inject it. Good like way to do it is just like have a tool which abstract uh, stuff with it, and you can provide it, provide the tool. Inside you have a provided um, shot preferences. So you inject your tools and you have inside injected shot preferences and stuff like that. It simplifies your code. And in this quick round, we went through all of them. I don't know how we stand with time. No, not bad. Uh, again, a little summary. We have these libraries. Uh, I have uh, flyers here with all these libraries and some uh, libraries for iOS and stuff from our company. Uh, they are still from the open source bar. Uh, there's the GitHub when you have an example of every of this library in use and also like Eric's Java, Retro Lambda, uh, they're also there. And yeah, quick summary, butter knife and uh, to inject the views and set on click listeners, Picasso to download your pictures in uh, in background, RoboSpice and Retrofit to don't do HTTP connection in async tasks, so you have your API uh, solved, Armlight for SQL, Lombok for boilerplate, Parceler for Parceler, Dogger 2 for dependency injection in Timber. Remember, at least Timber, there's, yeah, but, and also remember about the flyers. So yeah, that quick overview of the stuff you should know and um, will ease your code, uh, make you less error prone and stuff like that. Good to use it. I have add bonus here. Uh, I need a second to set up. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about um, Also in uh, Poldia, we made an uh, add-on to OpenWRT which is uh, an open firmware for routers. Okay, so guys, but oh. can be easier like that. 
Okay. Uh, one thing is uh, I did I couldn't get the Ethernet connection here, so it's a little uh, a little faked because uh, I'm like sharing the internet uh, from my computer to the router, so I can show you like all the stuff. Uh, what it is about? Mm. Do you know? The library, the Facebook uh, showed like a few other weeks or months ago about uh, shaping your traffic and like simulating uh, like villages in India with your Wi-Fi. That's that's kind of stuff. One thing that's in their setup, it's uh, you have to have like MongoDB, Django, and stuff like that just to like simulate stuff on Wi-Fi. We we have the add-on. To open WRT, you just install inside uh, with a packet manager from uh, OpenWRT, and you have the shaper by yourself. Uh, it looks like that. Um, I can show you like live demo because the way around it works, I can't connect on the on my computer to show it. I have it on my phone. Uh, you have. For the beginning, like few uh, few levels uh, defined by us, but it's all configurable. Like you can do whatever you want. Uh, it uses uh, Linux Net, uh, I guess. I don't remember, sorry. Uh, inside, mm, and the really nice thing is, <laughs> don't mind my uh, host name. Um, you can. One of the biggest limitations for us with uh, Facebook uh, Lib is that you only like turn the Wi-Fi to the one shape, and that's all. You have like all the time India village in your over, on in, in your router. On our uh, solution, you have a list of devices. You can each of them change the uh, speed, whatever you, you need. And the one also neat thing is, which I can show you, and you can capture stuff with a sniffer. So you want to uh, debug some HTTP connections or whatever you need. And it uh, do the uh, Wireshark, and it sends it to Cloud Wireshark. So one thing you have to remember, never debug stuff. You don't want to have it in internet. Like everything you put in, in internet, it will come up somewhere unexpectedly. Uh, and it's uh, also in our flyer, if you want to get it. Really simple tool, but gives you a lot of uh, possibilities to like test uh, your apps with low level of uh, reception. So that's all. With uh, our ad banners. Yeah, that's name. Yeah, that's... Thanks.